Welcome to the second half of KISS Community Connections 103.1 KISS FM. Guess what? It's still me. And do I have a lot more to talk about? Of course. Of course I do. Okay. We're going to talk about an event coming up. Uh, the Texas State NAACP is holding this, this uh, pre-convention event in Killeen, Saturday, October 7th, and it will be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's going to be on Avenue D between Gray and 8th Street. Those streets will be blocked off. So it's going to be a health and informational fair, and it's free, free, free 99, don't cost you anything. At this fair, we will do vision screening, and a vision screening consists of a vision gun, and it actually reads your vision. Uh, for some people, it's good. Some people have gotten some bad news because they thought they were they could see pretty well, and they found they didn't. But with this paperwork, you can actually take it to an optometrist and, and to get your glasses. So and so, I advise everybody to come out, you know, and get this HIV testing uh, is needed. You might say you're abstinence, but you don't know what's going on with anybody else. Uh, it's going to be a lady there, Trudy, and Trudy's been on the show twice. Uh, and she's HIV positive and she had nothing to do with having sex. Not at all. Nothing to do with it a bit. But the HIV testing is free and it's private. So nobody will be like, ooh, there are things. No, there won't be that in. It, it's private. We're also, Walgreens will be there doing flu shots uh, for everybody. Now, for just a few, they'll be doing flu shots for everyone. We're going to do blood pressure, blood pressure checks. So uh, come out and see those. And then we're going to have other agencies that offer things to the community, such as WIC. They'll be there. I learned something about WIC because I thought WIC was for women. And, well, I got smacked in the head when I found out it was for men, too. It's for everybody, but it's just called WIC. But you're going to have WIC there. You're going to have the Department of Aging there. I talked to the lady from Department of Aging. I had no clue all the things that they do. Their A to Z list is, re is, is really big, uh, but they're going to be there. Uh, somebody from there from the Bell County uh, Health Department will also be there. The veteran, the veterans uh, health van, it will be there set up to talk to all of our veterans and, and, and see what they need and um, fill out any addition, help them with paperwork. But they're going to be there to, to do their jobs. So we will have also um, the Nighthawks as our ABA basketball team. They will be there. And I didn't know until lately but fort hood has an aba basketball team they'll be out there too and they're going to bring street hoops um so they'll be playing some basketball in the street so bring your a game because i'm sure they're going to bring theirs they're going to have some jerseys to give away it's going to be a lot of fun uh and we got them because remember we're talking about health and basketball it's physical is health you know it, it's helping you keep in shape uh, and do things and you know you guys who who used to be good come on out and show how good you are now but uh it's, it's, it's for fun also phase organic catering she's gonna do a a class called healthy eating and what is msg and as we know we can google msg and you find out that msg is the cause of a chemical imbalance in you it causes you to let's just say you're sitting at work today or you're sitting anywhere and all of a sudden you're craving not a not a Hershey bar, which is all chocolate. You're craving, a, you know, some bar with, you know, all the car caramel and nuts and all that. And it's actually the MSG in there. So she will teach you all the items that have MSG in there. And she will talk about some of the, all of the alternatives to MSG and certain restaurants that use MSG. And if you Google MSG or kick MSG, You'll see there's a restaurant, a very popular restaurant, where it tells you don't go to that restaurant at all, meaning everything they cook has the MSG in it. Uh, so she'll talk to you about what it does to the brain and, you know, what we can do to fix that and how to kick it. And believe me, kicking MSG was not a, it's not an easy task. You're going to have to become stronger than your mind is because your brain's going to say one thing and you have to tell it, no, we're not doing that today. Also, Faye's going to teach you how to do help, make healthy drinks. Uh, to better our life because, you know, now we have realized that our eating habits, that we, we didn't inherit them. Some of them we inherited, yes, but some we just did because we wanted to are killing us, you know, and now we're, we're mindful and we're 
kind of caring about our health now. So uh, we're trying to leave those drink those things behind. But she's going to teach how to make uh, healthy drinks. And her workshop will take place at one o'clock. It's going to be in the same area, except for her her workshop will be on Avenue D, but it's going to be in the Village Co-op, which is three twenty four East Avenue D. So it's in the same area that we are in, but that's the building that we'll be using. Our workshop is one o'clock, and once again, it is free. Carol Moore, our state our state health uh, chair, is also our Red Cross disaster relief chair. And she's going to be doing free Red Cross training at 2 o'clock. We will have laptops there, and everybody will be trained in Red Cross. And, yes, it's free. Now, you're asking why should we do that? Number one, this is hurricane season. And we know hurricane season comes every year, so it doesn't skip a year or whatever, but it, it comes every year. And Red Cross sets up teams, and they go to destinations. And a lot of times, I'm just saying, Red Cross doesn't do their job. But you know what? The more of us that are trained to do this, to know what's going on, the better we are to help and assist and push the and, and push that, that table, push that paperwork. You know, because if you walk into a Red Cross Center as of right now and you're not trained, they're gonna sit there and you have no clue what, what what's supposed to be done. So you're gonna sit there and you're gonna do whatever they say, listen, this is how you do this, this is how you do that. And you're gonna do it. And you're going to assume that they're taking care of everybody, but they might not be. Now, let's say you walk in there another way and you are certified. You're going to walk in and you're going to know what questions to ask. You're going to know who to call if certain things aren't done. You will be able to walk in there with knowledge of not just sitting there and saying, yes, I want to work. What do you want me to do? You're going to walk in there with the knowledge of this is how I know how to do this. If there's a disaster, you will be trained on what to do first, what to do second, how to get it done. So you will have the training that they have. Also having the training allows you to pick up and move. And what I mean is right now, let's say right now we know Puerto Rico um, hurricane hit pretty bad and they're, doing, they're not doing good. But Red Cross volunteers are there. So you could be one of the people that they call and say, hey, let's go. Do they pay you? Yes, you are paid. But, you know, they might say, hey, you know, go, um, let, 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 let's get with this. Your Red Cross training also crosses over to FEMA because in a in a pinch FEMA will pick you up and and with them because they know you've been Red Cross trained which makes you almost equal to FEMA's training the difference is, uh, is the paperwork and to give you for instance of the good thing about it I went over we had a um, Red Cross shelter during a during a hurricane I went over to the where Red Cross was and I asked the lady you know I well, well, first I walked in with no vest. So I just simply walked in, introduced myself, how, asked how's everybody doing, have they filled out the paperwork. And, you know, she gave me some off-the-wall crazy answer. And I was all right with that. So I left, went back to my vehicle, came back with my vest, and I asked her again. Wow. It went from, we're, we're taking care of everybody, everybody's fine. It went from that to, well, we haven't got around to it yet. Wow, how things change. Well, she said we hadn't got around to it yet. So guess what? With my vest, I bought my notebook. What was in my notebook? The same forms that they have to fill out. So I got the people to sign the forms to get ready so they could be in, in, on the rolls to get what Red Cross had to give them. But I did it. She asked me, did I want her to turn it in? I didn't want her to turn it in. I didn't want her to put it into the computer. I did it because why I was trained to do so. So I got it done. Uh, was she a happy person? Of course not, but it, did, it wasn't about her. It was about helping people and getting it done. So the Red Cross training, we'll run by the hour and it's gonna be at 2 p.m. in the same building, which is 3, 324 East Avenue D, same building. Like I said, at two o'clock um, and we'll have laptops there to also help you out. As I mentioned, the Nighthawks is the ABA basketball team. They'll be there with their jerseys. And then a so well Fort Hood, they'll also be there with um, jerseys. And they're bringing the street hoop so they can play, so you, you can play. We've included things. We will have food vendor there. So um, those of us who will be there from 10 to 4, we will have a food vendor there on site to cook. I won't tell you his name, but you'll find out when you get there. But uh, yes, we do have food. In fact, we have two food vendors that will be there. 
And why are we doing this? It's a pre-convention event. It's all about health. And um, when people say NAACP, you get a bunch of, of, of I guess you, 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 get, you get a twist of answers because people will say, well, I don't know what the local is doing, you know, um, so I'm not going to be bothered. But we do, we as far as state, and I'm a state education chair, we do things differently than everybody else because we have a right to go to any city that we need to to get something done. So our health chair, along with me, I'm working with her, um, and we also work together as chair just because she's chairing it. Yes, she is, but my part is to help her make it perfect and make it great and make it as well as it can be. So I'm assisting her in doing that. But everything I've listed, except for your food vendor, is free uh, for everybody, all ages. Bring your kids, get their vision checked, give them their flu shots, get them ready. If you take flu shots, get them their flu shots so they'll be ready. Come and learn from Faye how to be a little bit more healthier than we are right now. Uh, and if you want to start on that track, Faye will have a... You'll have time because she'll be there the whole time. After her workshop at two, from one to two, she's not going to just up and pack up and leave. She'll still be there. Uh, and there's other rooms in the village co-op, excuse me, where she can, you know, sit down and talk with you a little bit more. You have a little bit more insight of what you need to do. Also, Faye hosts classes, so I'm sure she'll talk about one of her upcoming classes mm -hmm. at that time to make us aware of... Um, of taking care of our health and some of the simplistic things we can do because she has a lot of us um, with this healthy drink that we drink, we make it ourselves. Uh, and, and it gets you time to experiment with it because, you know, it's basically all I drink and other than teas, it's all I drink. But she's taught us how to and um, you feel much better. You have more energy. And um, yes, you're, you're losing weight if that's what you want to lose. But all in all, it's keeping you healthy and, and just making us all together better. So uh, I will say we need you all to show up um, November 7th, I mean, sheesh, October 7th from 10 to 4 to the um, pre-convention health event. And pre-convention is because it's a week before the convention because the actual Texas State NAACP's convention will be October 12th, 13th, and 14th. As of right now, it's going to be at the planetarium at CTC. Everything will be there, so come on out. The workshops that the NWCP will have for the state convention, they all are free. They're free. The lunch in the banquet is not, but the workshops are free and open to the public for you to come. If you need any more information, contact me, uh, Facebook me, inbox me however you, you can find me i'm phyllis jones wherever, wherever uh, on social media i'm still myself and i can give you more information um, also pastors are once again our state health chair carol moore is having a, a minister's luncheon it's free once again it, it's totally free no cost but ministers are are asked to come out to a minister's luncheon the topic is the mind, body, and soul. Um, and you have the RSVP. So you are RSVP to L, L, two L's, L, L, Y, D, I, A, N, double, A, C, P, at gmail.com. You'll email um, our state secretary to let her know that you'll be there so that she can make sure that we have enough food for you and it also will be held from 12 to 3 and that's at Shiloh Inn in Colleen. So pastors um, come out. If you're listening and you don't know if your pastor knows about it, let him know and uh, you can contact me for more information. Um, like I said, most of everybody know you can find me Facebook, inbox me, social media. You can find me and um, just say, hey, listen, my pastor wants to know more about it or I am a pastor and I want to RSVP. I didn't get the information. One way or the other, contact me and I can lead you to where you need to go to get that job done so that all of our pastors can come. It doesn't matter what denomination you are, what color you are, uh, where you're from. We don't care. You know, if you're green with blue stripes, that's cool. <laughs> we, 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 don't, we don't care about any of those uh, immunities. Like I said, we want pastors to come, uh, ministers to come, all all to come like i said there's no just because we're in double you don't have to be african-american to be there we want all of them to come 
and show support and talk about the mind, body, and soul because those are the things that we need to make sure that they stay straight. They all work together. We become a better people. Um, so religion does not play a part in that. It, it doesn't. I mean, but it's just that our pastors and our ministers are supposed to be the head. So it's just pulling us all together to one big, big, huge um, group of information and, and talking. So like I said, we would like for you to come. It will be, I know it's a weekday, but it will be the 12th of October from 10 12, excuse me, 12 to 3 at the Shiloh Inn Hotel. So, um, and like I said, uh, email L-L-Y-D-I-A-N-A-A-C-P at gmail.com to let her know that you're coming. So, like I said, so she can make sure that uh, you get some food and, and, and have a place. Because also our state health care, Carol Moore, has gifts for all the pastors that come and um, they come out and talk and just get to know each other and get to know some new ones because all pastors and ministers of our churches, they don't know each other. So I need you to come out to those two events. And also, if you miss any of this loaded information that I gave you, you always can remember on Tuesdays, and I always say Tuesday to give our, our station manager time, but you can go to mykiss1031.com then go over to Community Connections, drop down, and the show will be there, and all the information will be there. Also, you can hit me up and um, let me know what's up. Okay, now, uh, on Thursday of last week, I held a, well, Kiss Community Connections, we held a welcome for our, our police chief, uh, Charles Kimball. And I, we had a, I'm, I'm surprised that the, I was, I really was. I, I just like, there's not many people going to come. But, you know, actually, a lot of people did show up. Uh, and it was more of a family than meeting the chief, you know, because sitting down and talk with him, he is about the community, uh, all about the community. And uh, he wants to be more involved, but what he also stated was it takes two to solve a crime. Police department can't do it all. They can't do it all. And we know that it takes a community. And we were talking about that, you know, because what he says we need to remember is when he first got here, you know what they told him the first day he signed on? Welcome, here's your contract, here, here you are, and we're taking 28 officers from you. So imagine walking into the door and being told, bang, we're taking 28 of your officers away. Just, that's it. That, that, and, that, that, and, you know, for him, you figure walking into a job where previously when you were looking at it and, you, you know, before you signed on, you knew what was going on now to be taken and changed it. So he's going to do some reshuffling. He's uh, talked about having more officers on the street, but he's also talked more about having the community part where the community, where we, uh, you know, in the police department build a trust. You know, a lot of things don't aren't told and aren't said and nothing's done about it because we don't have that trust, that, that, that community trust that links us together that we need to have to say, you know, uh, hey, listen, this is what happened over here. This is what happened over there. You know, some of them call it snitching, but you know what? Let, let's be real about it. You know, if we know crimes are being committed, you know, who's doing it, it's for the betterment of the community to uh, change it and not just, you know, say, okay, you know what? The police can't do their job. Well, every now and then we need to help do some support and um, pitch in. And like I said, I'm talking to our chief. Uh, we all got to find out that, like I said, he's about the community. Different people ask him, has he driven around the community? And he has. He actually has. He uh, let us know some a lot of the streets that he had drove on. And, you know, everybody asks those challenging questions. Have you been on this street? Have you been over there? And he was like, yes, I've been over there. Yes, I've been over there. And um, so um, I'll say this to say from what we all talked about, and we were there for two hours, uh, Think that he's a police chief that's going to make a difference in our our city you know because um there's a lot of craziness going on and we need to help him and the police department bring our city back to where it is instead of sitting back going yeah i know who did it but i'm not gonna say anything well that doesn't help actually it doesn't help the police department you're actually helping the criminals that did it and that element that did it you're kind of helping them out by saying you know um I know who did it, but I'm not going to tell nobody. Uh, I know who did it, but I don't want nobody to find out that I said anything. 
all those things seek to do is create a bigger problem and a bigger gap because then it will become well i can come in and do anything i want to and it's nothing going to happen to me and basically they're they're right you know i mean they're it's bad to say it, but they're kind of right when they say that because nothing's happening they are you know doing what they're doing so let's help our chief let's give him a chance let's reach out to him and uh, make sure that you know make sure he's about what he's, he's about what he says he's about so far from us he is uh, everybody exchanged numbers i invited uh it, everybody was invited but i made sure there was a mixture of people i made sure there was some people from car clubs some of the bike clubs some of our organizations some of our people that actually care about our city uh i made sure were there and they actually showed up and they were there and our vfw was there talk about what they do for the community so he had a cross section of people to uh come in and in fact you know he was like this is a big old family here i got some cousins over here i got some aunts over there i got some uncles over there i mean you know it was it, it became more of just him meeting us and us talking he did become more of a family sit down and talk because everything was thrown on the table uh with no judgment no judgments no anything nothing and there's a couple of ideas that he wants to have he want, that he has and the group told him hey let us know what you want we'll help you do it you know so right then and there he saw that he has some support where he might have said i don't know who's going to help do some community things i want to do well they all leaped in hey let us know when when where to meet you get we'll sit down talk about it and we'll get it done so he came up with ideals and the good thing is that the group there came up with uh we'll get it done just let us know what you want us to do so that's my my show for this hour of, of you all listening to me i want to thank you for listening to kiss community connections 103.1 kiss fm I want you to always remember you cannot lead a positive life with a negative mind. We'll talk to you next Sunday. Bye now.